Today, I'd like to review with you how to log in, how to leverage the tool, and also to understand what sets it apart from others. Personally, I have more than seven years of experience in Smartsheet, designing solutions that are quite complex, but also helping users that are just starting to understand the tools and the powerful capabilities the tool has. Hello, my name is Will Van Buskirk, owner of Bluebird Consulting. Our team builds Smartsheet solutions for customers across the world. First, to find Smartsheet, you will type in Smartsheet on Google and be able to find the link here where you can click in and it will first show you two important buttons here. Watch a demo, which will help you see a little bit more of how to use the tool. Or you can click try Smartsheet for free. When you click this, you can enter your email and create a password and it will generate an account for you to be able to test out. It will be a trial account for you to first get used to it. Now, a lot of times people are brought in as they are shared to something that a user that's already been in the system is working on. So that can help you kind of get at least used to how the tool works when you see someone else starting to build it out. But if you're doing this on your own, it's best to create your own account and take advantage of the templates they have. I'll show you how to groom a sheet on your own. So when you first come into Smartsheet, you can click plus and you have the ability to create any of these sample sheets. You can also click create new. Once you've created one, you'll be able to navigate on the left-hand side. So this browse option gives you access to all the sheets, reports, and dashboards that you've created so far. The notifications above will tell you when someone's notified you within the system, whether it be an automation or any kind of email within Smartsheet. Recents is where you could go to anything you had been working on. So in this case, I just created this example sheet for us to go through what does it mean to create a sheet. I simply made a new sheet here and rename the columns to fit my needs. So in this case, I renamed the primary column to be task. It's usually best to create the primary column to be something that you're going to have a unique each row. It's basically a way for you to have a unique value per row. Then I have notes category. In this case, I'm just showing category to see this is a dropdown. So I have made the column properties a dropdown list. I have the option to make it multiple cells. And I also can um, make it restrict to just these values. So this allows me to restrict the user from being able to just put anything in. I also have an example start date in here where I have a date picker available. And I also can do tricks like type in today and it will automatically put in the date. Now, when you're creating a sheet, it's helpful to organize yourself in all the different columns that you would need but also create a report that can group it for you. So I have created a report to show you how you can organize your information. For now, you see I have three tasks, which is cover sheets, reports, and dashboards. So now I'm gonna show you what a report will look like. Go to your browse. You'll be able to click create. And in that create option, you see you can click report. Grid is a sheet. And of course you can also click dashboard. So in this case, I've already created a report. I'm gonna to go to my recents and I will actually see it right here. So, so far I have only made it so the source is that example sheet I just made. I can add multiple sheets to it, but beware that you need the columns to be similar. If you try to add a bunch of sheets with different column names, the only thing that will overlap is that primary column. The goal would be to make sheets that are similar and then bring them together in a single view and report. So I can rename this to be task, um, but a nice feature about the fact that you can rename reports in at least the primary call, it's that you can make sure that if you're bringing them together sheets with different names as the primary column, you can have a solidifying universal name in the report. I can then add a column and I can choose any of the ones that I've had in the sheet. So you see that notes as well as category and start date. These are values and columns that are already in my sheet. These extra ones are available to me anytime because they are system columns. Modified by, modified, created, and created by are all values that the system knows always. So I can bring them, I can remove them. I cannot edit them. They simply tell me what my user email is. So I hit OK. And then finally I can filter. In this case, I really have no interest in filtering it. I want to show you all the values, but I could select any column and create a filter for this specific report. So you see here, I have the task, I have notes, category, and my start date, and I can still make the selections here in that report and save. So what's nice about this is you can have a report 
look at multiple sheets and you can control and update them from that single report. So we use this a lot in Smartsheet to make it so that users don't have to navigate all around. Perhaps they want to update projects in one place instead of having to navigate to each project. We can make them reports that show information from every specific project and they have this one-stop shop place to update all their assets. This link right here would take you straight to that sheet. It's available with every report. Now I want to show you how you can use or one of the columns to separate it out. In this case, category makes the most sense because I already have that A, B, C. I hit OK. And you can see here, now I can see it in different categories. I have the A, B, and C. And I can summarize. In this case, I don't have a lot to summarize, but if I wanted to sum the items below, I could do that. Um, I could simply say, oh, let's sum sheet name. And you can see that's just the count right there. So I have three values all together. And if I want to change one, for instance, I say, this should be B instead. I can say and refresh and you'll see that now A has disappeared and there are two Bs. So it's great to be dynamic after you've saved and refreshed, it will update everything. We also have dashboards. So you can imagine once you've made the report that you want to see, it's easy to then take that information and put it on a dashboard. So I'll show you that now. I can go back to my browse. I can click create and I can click example dashboard. That will take me to where I created it. I can click right into it and you can see this option here to add widgets. So a sheet is where the actual data is stored. A report is a filtered view of that data. But then obviously a lot of times you want to create a view, a portal or a user experience that is just going to show you everything going on. And it's going to bring it together and tell you a story about the data. That's what a dashboard is for. So in here, I can click add widget and I have these options here to be able to add title and reports. In this case, I actually want to use a report. So I can click add report and then I can type in example or view example. By just finding that, I've brought it now into this dashboard. So I can show that information here in one place. I could also make a graph off of this data to show B has two and C has one. So we're going to do that now by simply saying chart, add data, and I'm going to use the same source, a view example. And I hear down below it, as you see that I have two for B and I have one for C. And I can groom this information to really tell the story I want, but you can see a dashboard is so easy to put together. And we can build sheets, reports, and dashboards to really illustrate the items that we're working on. I have seen customers build out really helpful dashboards for their teams, doing it in a few hours when they had to before work through so many teams to give support to build something in another application. Smartsheet empowers the people to build items for themselves and in from their user experience. I have seen so many employees get a lot more credit in their organization because they built up dashboards that have shown their work and shown what they're actually doing for the team. And they help everybody work together. We have also have automations. So let's say that I would like to get a notification every time the category switches to A. I can do that by creating an automation. I click create from scratch. And I would say notify if switched to A. Now, um, we teach this a lot about naming things properly. You really want to make sure that when you create automation, you name it well, because it may be something you need a single time, but then you'll add more and more on. So we help create a structure for that and, and walk our teams and walk our customers through what is the best way to organize your information so that you can find it easily and you have breadcrumbs for things that Maybe you'll build and then you'll leave alone for a little while. I'm going to have, first of all, this trigger. This trigger is that when any field changes, I don't want to have any field. So I'm going to say that when the category changes to A, I want it to start my workflow. So this trigger is how it is able to get started. I could have it when a, only when a row is added to the sheet. I could have it only when it's updated, and I can also set it so that it could run daily as well. But today, I'm going to just be set up with 
running it when the user changes to A. In this case, I could have conditions to say, well, I only want to have it if there's a date and the start date, for example. I'm not going to worry about that yet, but you can create a lot of different conditions and you can also use the conditions to make different paths. So maybe in one scenario, you get an email and another, you get a Slack notification and so forth. So in this case, I have a lot of options for it to move rows, um, as you can see down here, or lock the row. Um, I can, uh, when it says move row, I can actually move it to another sheet automatically. I don't need to do anything like that. In my case, I just want it to notify me. So I'm going to go all the way back to the alert someone here, and I'm going to have my name in there and a simple message to say, someone change the task category to A. And then I could add in all the fields so that the user is able to see what it is. And I could save that right there. So now if I were to change and hit save, I will receive a notification. And when it's done and the notification works, I would see it come here in my belt and I also get an email about it. Smartsheet has a lot of extra tools like Dynamic View, Data Mesh, and Control Center that we can go into with other videos.